Hello, welcome back. I'm Chris, you're watching Fragmental. Thank you very much for joining me. Autumn is the time where fragrance YouTubers actually get to talk about their favourite fragrances. I mean their actual favourites. None of this summery, citrusy nonsense. So, stay tuned for my top 10 favourite designer fragrances for Autumn. So yeah, I was just having a little bit of fun in that intro. I love summer fragrances there amongst some of my favourites, but when it comes to autumn fragrances and winter fragrances, they tend to be a bit richer, a bit darker, a bit more complex. There's just more going on. There's, there's just more that interests me. So I'd probably say autumn fragrances are probably my favourites. Without further ado, did I just actually say without further ado? No one says that anymore. Okay, let's let's just get into the list. Number 10 is a cozy, comforting, sexy fragrance from Boss. This is Boss The Scent Private Accord. This is a spicy, fruity fragrance with a bit of a mocha accord because there's some cacao, so it's quite chocolatey, and then there's a little bit of coffee, so it does lean a little gum on, but I, I love this fragrance. Boss have done a really good job with this. A lot of Boss fragrances to me smell good but they do lean a little sort of generic designery i don't think this one does this one if anything smells a little more niche i think it smells higher quality than a lot of bosses fragrances this one i think would work well as a date night scent as a club night scent or any autumnal night scent for that matter one of the best from boss Number nine, it's another pretty fun autumnal fragrance. This one's from Azaro. It's actually their latest release. It's the most wanted parfum. This is a sweet, spicy fragrance. It's got really nice ginger pop in the opening. Has vanilla in here, which helps it make it so autumn appropriate. I actually pick up on some slightly indolic white florals in this. I, I may be completely off with that. It's not a listed note. No one's ever mentioned it. I don't think anyone else has ever mentioned it, but I get a little bit of something, a little bit of something white floral, which I actually like, so that's not a bad thing. Really pops, gets noticed. I think it's classier than the most wanted in the black bottle, but still tons of fun. Number eight is a fragrance that I've not mentioned for a few years, but I wanted to remind you of how good this is. From Guerlain, it's Lom Ideal EDP. So with this one, you get cherry, vanilla, almond accord. Actually reminds me of the drink Amaretto Sours, which is a drink I really enjoy. I'll sometimes have one at the end of the night because I find it really refreshing. What I will also have at the end of the night is this fragrance because it has good performance, good longevity, so it lasts on my skin. As it dries down, bolder notes of leather and smoke are revealed, but you never really lose that cherry almondy DNA, which I love so much. This is a yummy, fun fragrance that carries enough gravitas to work just as well in a formal situation as it does on a night out. If you like tiramisu, you will enjoy the fragrance at number seven because from Salvatore Ferragamo, this one is Womo's signature. I think this reminds me of a tiramisu dessert because it's got a creamy, chocolatey, coffee thing going on. The spices bring some energy and sex appeal. And actually the spices in here remind me a little bit of how the spices are done in Spice Bomb Extreme. If you like addictive sweet scents and you want to smell good enough to eat, this is definitely one that you must try. Not too expensive. You can pick this 100ml bottle up for a around about £60, which I think could value. I love the Armani Code DNA. In last year's autumn list, I had Armani Code Absolute. I'm changing things up a little bit this year because I think the EDP also works really well in the autumn. You've got that unmistakable Code DNA, the powdery citruses, but this one throws in a load more vanilla, which is what makes it so good for the autumn. I actually prefer this to the brand new Armani Code Parfum. I find this one to be stronger, richer, and more full-bodied. This is a beautiful modernized code that has the power to punch through those cooler autumnal temperatures. If you love fragrance as much as I do, head over to my online store, luxparfum.co.uk. You'll find my favorite brands plus brands you can't find anywhere else in the UK. Link is in the description. Number five is a fragrance from Dior that I think is the best in the Sauvage line. It's the newest release of Sauvage Elixir. What's interesting about this fragrance is it moves away from the DNA of the other Sauvage flankers. It's got a really nice pairing of lavender and licorice, so it's strong, it's attention grabbing. People talk about Leighton from Parfum de Bali as being this very strong attention grabbing, compliment getting fragrance. Well, I think Dior are doing a similar thing with Elixir. It doesn't smell exactly the same as that fragrance, but I think it's doing the same job. And uh, it's a little bit cheaper. 
just a little bit because this is actually, I think, Dior's most expensive fragrance. It's a richer, bolder version of Sauvage for all the men who want to stand out from the boys that were all wearing regular Sauvage. On to number four, and in my opinion, this one was a big hit for Jean-Paul Gaultier. It's La Mal Le Parfum. This takes everything that was so good about the La Mal DNA, modernizes it with a good dollop of vanilla, increases the depth with amber, throws in some iris because, hey, everyone else is, and voila, you have La Mal Le Parfum. If you want to pull, first of all, get a body like this, and then, once you have that, spray this all over that chiseled torso. And number three is the first of two Tommy Ford fragrances in the top three. This is their latest release. It's Noir Extreme Parfum. This takes the sweet, nutty smell of the original, loads up the woods, adds a smidge of leather, and what you're left with is a stronger, more intense version of the original Noir Extreme. Out of the two fragrances, I prefer this one because it's a little heavier, richer, it's got a bit more gravitas, a bit more complexity. A must try for anyone who enjoys sweet, sexy smelling fragrances that have plenty of firepower. Number two, and I've been waiting to talk about this fragrance for months, but when I bought it, it just wasn't the appropriate weather really to talk about it that much. From Givenchy, it's Gentleman Reserve Privé. Absolutely perfect for the autumn. The Gentleman line centers on Iris. This one does too. It's a little bit nutty. It's got a good woody depth and a whiskey note. Now, hmm. Let's talk about this whiskey note because there's, there's definitely something whiskey-ish about this fragrance, but I wouldn't describe it as a realistic whiskey. All right, remember when you were a kid in the UK, I don't know, in the US with your candy, if you had these, uh, these little sweets, but we used to have beer bottles. They kind of tasted a little bit, maybe like beer, but it was like a, a sweet, kiddified version of, of beer. Well, if kids were sold whiskey sweets, which should never be done because it's, uh, it's very irresponsible, but if they were, if there was a whiskey bottle candy or sweet for kids and it was a, a sweeter sort of kiddified version of whiskey, that's, that's how I describe the whiskey in here. So it's not a realistic whiskey, it's more of a, a sweet sort of kiddified fun whiskey-ish type of smell. But despite all that, I bloody love it and I will definitely be spraying a few drams of this this autumn. Cheers. Number one, and this is actually the same number one fragrance as in my autumn designer list last year, but I had to give it the top spot because this fragrance excites me more than any of these fragrances. I love these fragrances, these are great, but the one at number one from Tom Ford, ombre leather, just does something to me that these don't do. It, it makes my eyes widen when I smell it and it just reaches a part of my brain where intense satisfaction lives. It's like getting a hit of a smell so satisfying that you need a few moments to recover and gather your thoughts. There's just something about that fruit and leather that works so well. Very wearable fragrance. It probably has a similar effect to those around you. I think it's intoxicating, mesmerizing, attention grabbing. It's pretty much everything you would want in the perfect autumnal fragrance. Hell of a frag from Mr. Tommy Ford. So there you go, that is my autumnal designer fragrance list for this year. A nice mix of a few older fragrances and then some brand new releases. So hopefully it's given you a few good ideas about what fragrances to go out and sniff if you're looking for something to wear for this autumn. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and that you liked it. And if you did, hit like and subscribe if you haven't already, for goodness sake. And if you do all that, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.